You have taught a course and you want to find out how much students have learned. One way to do this is by getting students to answer a number of questions, i.e. by setting them a written exam. The exam yields a mark which is supposed to reflect how much a student has learned. Just like you can use a ruler to measure the length of a pencil, you can use an exam to measure student learning and to separate the students who deserve to fail from those who deserve to pass. In that sense, the exam functions as a kind of sieve. Some students pass through, others don't. It is important that the sieve functions well. You don't want students failing who should have passed, or students passing who should have failed. So it is worthwhile investigating the quality of the sieve to see whether it works as you intended. Does it measure in a consistent way? And does it measure what we want it to measure? How does this work? Well, Suppose you are a farmer growing peas. When you harvest the peas, you have large ones which will end up as cheap Euroshopper peas and the small ones which can be sold as more expensive extra fine garden peas. So you pass them through a sieve in order to separate them. The extra fine garden peas will fall through. The Euroshopper peas will stay on top. If your sieve is a good one, you can put all the peas back into the bag and when you put them through the sieve again, the peas will be separated in the same way as before. If this is the case, the sieve is 100% reliable as a measurement instrument. But suppose one hole in the sieve is slightly larger than the others. When you put the peas through the first time, perhaps PA will fall through the larger hole. But when you do it again, it is likely that another P, perhaps PB, will end up falling through this larger hole. So, the result will not be exactly the same. Chance plays a role. In the case of peas and sieves, you can determine the reliability of the sieve as a measurement instrument by repeatedly passing the same peas through the sieve and calculating the correlation between the results. In the case of exams, obviously, you cannot determine reliability in this way. So, instead of getting students to retake the exam, you treat it as if it were two exams. After you have marked it, you split the exam up into two halves and consider each half as if it were a separate test. Instead of seeing the exam as one sieve, you have created two sieves, and you can check to what extent the sieves correlate with each other. Does student A, who would have failed if the exam consisted of the first half only, also fail if the second half was used, etc.? This is called the split half method, which was popular in the days of limited computer power. These days, the exam is split into as many parts as it has questions, and then the correlations between all these parts are used to estimate the reliability of the test. The formula used for this is called Cronbach's alpha, or, in the case of closed questions, KR20. These formulas yield a score between 0, extremely unreliable, and 1, totally reliable. In this way, we find out to what extent the exam is internally consistent, that means to what extent it measures one thing. But there is another aspect to the quality of our measurement instrument which is not captured by these calculations, and that is whether it measures what we want to measure. If the holes in the sieve are too wide, larger peas will fall through as well, and you will have problems selling the whole lot as extra fine garden peas. So even if the sieve works reliably, it may not perform the correct selection. As a measurement instrument, this sieve is reliable but not valid. The holes that are too wide can be compared to exam questions that do not measure what you wanted to measure. For example, your goal is that students are able to apply the concepts taught in the module, but in the exam you ask them only to describe and identify the concepts. This is called construct validity. Do your questions really measure what you want to measure, or do they measure something else? There is no mathematical formula to check this type of validity. What does help is to make a test matrix and to check carefully whether your questions match the matrix. To summarize, to investigate the reliability of an exam, you can perform a calculation using Cronbach's alpha or KR20. To help ensure its validity, you should make a test matrix and check your questions carefully, so that you know that your sieve yields consistent results and that the holes are of the right size.